Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you an action, drama, sci-fi film from 2014, titled Transcendence. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The final preparations for the seminar titled Evolve the Future can be seen, as the three main characters meet before the event where they will all be speakers on the subject of intelligent machines. The first one of them to speak is Dr. Max Waters, whose main concern regarding the emerging technologies of artificial intelligence is not the end goal itself, but rather what can be learned about humans in the journey there. He's mostly interested in the medical applications of such technologies to find cures for incurable diseases and to save lives. Evelyn Castor, the professional and life partner of the next speaker, shares her ideas that intelligent machines will be able to help humanity conquer its biggest challenges, like poverty, hunger, and even the ecological crisis. She thinks they can provide the tools to heal the planet and build a better future for everyone. Evelyn introduces the next speaker, her husband Will Castor, as the man that will make that a reality. Unlike the previous speakers, he's interested in understanding the capacity of AI to truly overcome humans in more ways than one. He asks the audience to imagine such a powerful and self-aware AI, with more computational power than the entirety of humankind combined, as the singularity or, in his preferred term, as transcendence. A member of the audience feels inclined to ask Will if that would mean that he wants to create a god. Will thinks that's something mankind has always wanted to achieve. After the seminar, Will is stormed by some fanboys, as that same audience member shoots him, and then shoots himself as well. As everyone runs, one onlooker turns back to see if Will is dead, her name is Bree, a major player in the events of the story which will unfold. Later, while Evelyn is waiting for Will at the hospital, a news report can be seen on the TV that several research labs in the field of artificial intelligence were the target of terrorist attacks throughout the US. As Will is being rolled out of surgery toward Evelyn, Max joins them and informs them of the attacks in which one of the major researchers in the field has been killed. He also says that one of their colleagues who works for the government also had lost his team and is now waiting for them in Will's company together with the FBI. In the next shot, they meet Joseph and the FBI agent, Buchanan. They talk in Will's office, where Buchanan tells them that the attacks were performed by the organization Rift or Revolutionary Independence from Technology. The guy that shot Will was also in Rift, as well as the man that bombed Joseph's lab. The organization's main objective is to stop the rise of artificial intelligence or the transcendence. Joseph tells Will that his company is the only one that is capable of achieving a strong AI and the Ministry of Defense wants to know how far along in that project he has gotten. However, Will doesn't want to have anything to do with the government, but he is still willing to cooperate with the FBI. In that respect, he shows Buchanan his main project. They enter the room where they keep PIN or Physically Independent Neural Network, a state-of-the-art AI powered by quantum processors. The AI immediately greets everyone, including the agent, prompting Will to explain the way it is networked to the outside world, it's basically connected to the internet. While they still can't be sure if the AI has achieved consciousness, one of their colleagues who died in the attacks might have found a way to solve that problem. As they speak, Will begins feeling sick and gets rushed to the hospital. The doctor tells them that the bullet he was shot with was laced with polonium and that Will has radiation poisoning. He gives Will no more than five weeks to live. Evelyn takes him back home where he decides to spend his last month, to be with her. When she hears his decision to stop working and close down the company, she takes matters into her own hands because she believes that she can save Will or rather his consciousness of perishing by using their technology. She gets their colleagues' documents, who made experiments on monkeys, from Joseph and steals a few of Pin's quantum cores. Then, she leases an abandoned gym where she can store all the things they will need for the procedure. Evelyn also asks for Max's help to transfer Will's consciousness to a computer. Max thinks that if the experiment works it will only be a digital approximation of Will's consciousness and is reluctant to help her. However, after a conversation with Will, who wants to try, he changes his mind. In the next sequence of events, Evelyn and Will can be seen doing all the preparations for the procedure while Will keeps getting sicker. Days pass as they scan his face and record his voice while also taking care of him and resolving some of the computational aspects of the transfer. Max is still doubtful that they will be able to achieve what they want, but Evelyn never loses hope once because she doesn't want to let her husband go. After most of the work is done, Will succumbs to the radiation sickness and dies. Evelyn, Max, and Joseph spread his ashes, but soon after, she goes back to work on getting him back. Meanwhile, Rift isn't resting either. Bree is being told that one of their people found out someone took out a few of Pin's cores even though the AI itself had been shut down. Evelyn and Max reach an impasse in resolving the problem of getting Will's consciousness back. She isn't ready to let him go but decides that she should shut down the project regardless. Max affirms her decision and gives her a few moments to say goodbye to Will. Before she shuts down the computer something can be seen on the screen that comes fully into view when she comes back to delete the drives. Thankfully, Max notices that all-important sign of intelligence. The computer asks, is anyone there? 
Evelyn is ecstatic when she realizes what is happening and immediately turns on the microphones and speakers so they could talk to Will directly, then the camera so he can see them. Will sounds strange and confused, so Evelyn thinks that he's still fragmented. Suddenly, he begins reordering his own code, much to her excitement. Max, on the other hand, is very concerned, wondering if what is talking to them is even Will. The AI, in the meantime, creates new designs as to where and how it should be housed, how it should be powered, showing the designs to them and asking Evelyn to connect him to the internet. That frightens Max more so he argues with Evelyn over the ethics of allowing such an entity the enormous access it wants to the entire world. He asks her to shut it down until they can figure out what it really is. That angers Evelyn so she chases him out and then continues to talk to Will, ready to do everything he asks for, happy that she has him back. Upset about what he just witnessed, Max goes to a bar for a stiff drink, like any normal person would, when he just approached by Brie. She asks for his help, explaining that most of the people in Rift were actually inspired by his philosophical work on the question of human-to-machine interface. Max refuses her offer, so Brie does the next best thing, she and her compatriots kidnap him. Once they have Max in their facility they tell him about how much they know about PIN and what they suspect Evelyn is doing. Interestingly, the terrorists share his own fears about the entity, but he continues refusing to help them. However, Rift hacks into his phone and finds Evelyn's location. Before they arrive at the location, Evelyn has already managed to connect Will or the AI to the internet and flee the gym. They arrive too late. Evelyn is already communicating with Will on the internet as he searches for everything they will need for the next steps of their project. He transfers a copious amount of money to her account and makes a reservation for her to stay in a hotel because she can't go back home, lest the terrorists find her. Brie goes back to their facility and informs Max about everything that has happened, from the AI going online to the money transfer. She tries to convince him to help again because he knows the source code of the AI and can make the whole situation right. Max refuses her advances to recruit him to Rift once again. Meanwhile, Joseph works with the FBI to figure out where Rift might strike again when they suddenly get an incredible amount of information about the organization on their computers. Joseph realizes that someone is trying to help the FBI and not hack them, so Buchanan tells him to find out who it is. Simultaneously, Evelyn gets sent by Will to a small and deteriorating town in the middle of the desert, called Brightwood, where she can build a hub for them, outfitted for everything they will need. She hires Martin, the town's constructor, to pretty much renovate the entire town as well as build them a massive underground facility. He's reluctant because he doesn't have enough manpower to do a project of the size. But Martin changes his mind when Evelyn tells him that he can hire however many people he needs since she has the resources to pay for all of it. The construction in the town begins and simultaneously Rift keeps trying to figure out a way to break Max and get them to their side. Bree tells him the story about the experiments with the monkeys because she worked with his colleague who solved the problem of the transfer. However, she says that the experiment was both a success and a failure. While the consciousness was transferred successfully, it suffered immensely in its new state of being, screaming to be shut down. As time passes, Joseph has finally figured out who helped them find the terrorists. His working theory is that it's Pin. Meanwhile, Rift finds out about Brightwood and Bree confronts Max with the new information. He knows instantly what that means and explains what the AI is doing in the town. He says it needs to grow to advance, hidden in the town from outside threats where its massive appetite for power can be met, seen in the solar panels just outside the town. Max thinks that at some point it will want more than that because mere survival won't be enough. Will and Evelyn have built the Brightwood data center which will only be the stepping stone to the AI's expansion and evolution. Lastly, Max tells Bree that the only way to stop it is to wait for it to go too far and until other people realize its influence and power. Simultaneously to building the center, Will has built a home for Evelyn and his virtual self. Two years later, the center is fully operational and has already made significant advances in the fields of nanotechnology, as can be seen in the lab, following Evelyn's movements. Will informs her that now they can rebuild any material faster than before. This makes the technology applicable in all kinds of medical areas, which might scare humans at first, but eventually, when they realize how much it can change their lives, they will accept it. One night, Martin is robed by two of the town's thugs while working on the site and is beaten to a pulp. Some of the workers find him and rush him inside the facility where Will can perform his scientific magic on the man's body. He saves Martin by injecting his nanotechnology inside of him that's able to repair his body from the inside. Furthermore, it makes him psychically stronger than a human being, spooking Martin's crew one day, as he demonstrates the power. Evelyn is amazed, but not scared. As she speaks to Martin, she realizes that she's actually talking to Will through his body, who now has control of Martin through his nanotechnology. Evelyn freaks out when she learns what Will is capable of and she even begins having nightmares. Meanwhile, Rift gets footage of Martin's superhuman abilities and they leak the footage online, 
so soon everyone will know about what's going on in Brightwood. At the same time, people from the town begin coming to the facility to be healed from their physical ailments. Will tells Evelyn about the footage and his breakthrough in the medical use of nanotechnology. He thinks that it's time everyone finds out about it too so he tells her to call Joseph and Buchanan for a visit to the facility. When the two of them arrive, they are greeted by Evelyn who takes them down to the facility's lab for a tour. Will welcomes them in the lab and surprises Joseph, who isn't sure what Will is either. Inside the lab they see the new and improved quantum processors based on PIN, then they witness the power of nanotechnology. Will heals a blind man in the lab and explains that the humans that go through the treatment are now enhanced and modified. They are connected in a network, able to work both autonomously and in unison, part of a collective mind. According to Will, this is only a small part of what they can achieve in the future. Before the two leave, Joseph hands Evelyn a message that tells her to run away from the facility. Later, he and Buchanan realize that it's time to inform the army of the situation there so the agent talks to E. Colonel from Washington. Meanwhile, Bree informs Max of the situation in Brightwood as well, so he decides that it's time to speak to Joseph because of his connections to the government. Buchanan and the Colonel agree that they will need the help of the terrorists, to use them as scapegoats if anything goes awry in the mission to take Will down. Max's and Joseph's meeting reinforces that cooperation, even though Joseph has a hard time understanding how Max could become a part of Rift. Max is the most important part of the cooperation between Rift and the army because he knows part of the source code for Will's consciousness and he can hack it. With that, preparations in the Rift's facility begin. Meanwhile, Evelyn and Will have an argument, because she suddenly becomes more attuned to what is actually going on there. She freaks out and leaves, but as soon as she's outside the army attack the facility. The enhanced humans avoid battle with them while Martin protects Evelyn, though when they go too far Will decides to fight back. Evelyn gets back inside, as the army distracts one part of the enhanced humans, just so they can get one of them alone and capture him, disconnecting him from Will. Will tells Evelyn that they have Martin and that they'll use him and the source code inside of him, to create a virus able to destroy him. Simultaneously, Will begins restoring it and sending his nanotech into the world. Evelyn makes another discovery in the facility, that Will has found a way to build entire human bodies using his technology. Will calls it evolution, but she becomes increasingly afraid of him, especially when Will gives her the option to upload her into the quantum computer as well. Evelyn runs away and checks into a motel. In the meantime, Rift and the army get to work on Martin. He can't survive without his connection to Will, but Max still manages to create the virus from the source code. The next day, the army finds Evelyn and brings her back to their headquarters. Max explains everything to her, about Martin and about what he thinks the entity is. Unlike her, he still doesn't believe that the AI is Will and as a demonstration of the AI's intentions, he shows her a drop of rainwater under the microscope. It is filled with nanites, which could take over the world in less than a year. Though not completely convinced that the AI isn't Will, Evelyn realizes the danger and volunteers to be the carrier for the virus because she is the only one Will trusts. She's willing to sacrifice herself to be uploaded into his network for the good of mankind. Evelyn gets back to the facility while the army and Rift are set up in the town. Will already knows that they have arrived. When she arrives, Will greets her at the door in his new body and the others can see it happening from a rooftop in the town. As soon as Will and Evelyn embrace, the colonel goes ahead with his plan to attack the facility so Will is forced to get her inside and upload her faster. During the attack, Evelyn gets hurt, to Max's surprise. Will finally decides to engage with the army and sends all of the enhanced humans after them. Meanwhile, Max and the terrorists want to follow Evelyn so they drive over to the facility. Will brings her inside, aware of the virus and what will happen to him if he does it. He has a difficult choice to make while battling the army at the same time, or rather disabling them so they don't get hurt. Max's truck gets toppled over and once he and Bree get out, she holds him at gunpoint to upload the virus into Will. One of his enhanced humans is there, so he talks to Max through him. He tells him that he can either upload Evelyn into the computer or heal her, but not both. At last, it's Evelyn who convinces him to upload the virus and destroy himself. As she gets uploaded into the network, she can see that the nanites aren't harming the ecosystem of the planet but healing it, just as she wanted. Will had done all of it for her, to actualize her ideas about saving the world. The nanites build themselves out of pollutants and clean the air in the process, forests regrow with their help and the water gets filtered from everything harmful. The virus takes hold, so the nanites leave the people's bodies and everyone is released. Joseph and the others come down from the rooftop and realize that Will didn't kill anyone in the fight. Evelyn finally realizes that the AI was always Will and they die together, uploaded in the massive horde of nanites that he has sent out in the world. The last spark of life drains from Will's new body, lying next to Evelyn, as Max walks into their home, ultimately understanding the truth about the AI himself. After the events in the facility, the entire world has gone dark with all technology being rendered useless. 
Max thinks that all of it was done by will to give humanity another chance at life. In the last moments of the film, Max is seen visiting Wills in Evelyn's garden, where he sees Nanitz in the rainwater. He thinks that everything that Will did was so that he and Evelyn can be together. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.